Hello, everyone, our faithful, probably like six or so viewers. Um, this is Jamie. If you're watching this video, you probably know me already. Um, or otherwise, I uh, thank you somehow for finding this. <laughs> and I'm Spencer. The same thing. Yes. It'd be very funny if you stumble across this as a YouTube video. I mean, it's possible, I guess, that if we if I if, if I'm smart enough and like not lazy and we put this under like the YouTube channel who is the mole, maybe some random mole viewers will stumble upon this. Oh yeah, and then we'll get some new casting people. But you're perfect. You'll figure it out. <laughs> this is secretly um, a marketing plan. Yes. But anyway, we host an online reality game through Facebook called Who is the Mole? And we're about to start our fifth season. By the time that this is published, the fifth season will have ended, but we're about to start it um, tomorrow night. Um, and what that means is it's um, a game that takes place all through Facebook, but it has players from multiple countries around the world. We've created all the assignments. We've picked our mole, done casting, uh, we'll write the quizzes, and it's a fun, light little romp, honestly. Um, but yeah, throughout the game, we wanted to start with this season making these um, host videos about um, like our thoughts, our impressions on the season, on the cast, about what's happening, how the mole's doing, all of that stuff. Um, so we wanted to start with this one, which is going to be a few different things. Primarily, it's a cast assessment, um, but we'll talk about some other things as well that kind of go along with that. Um, Spencer, what do you think I'm missing? Um, I think that's most things. Uh, and we're doing this because like, we figure it's the best way to like convey our experience of watching the shenanigans play out in front of us to like convey that to other people. Cause that's something mm -hmm. I personally have always wanted to try to do. Cause like I enjoy hosting so much cause I get to like, it's, it's my own personalized mole season just for me that I get to see played out. And it's neat if we can, if we can take that experience and share it as much of it as we can. Obviously there's a whole lot of nuance to it that like won't get translated, but this is at least some way we're trying, yeah. who knows how all this will work, but we're trying. <laughs> So basically we're the biggest nerds on the planet. I mean, we literally host online reality games based on TV shows like The Mole, mm -hmm. um, which I love, but you know, very, very nerdy. <laughs> um, but let's jump into it. Spencer, can we share a little bit about what our casting process looked like this season and just how that how that went? Uh, yeah, casting is always so stressful. So, I mean, I think it was like, what, two weeks ago? Or not two weeks ago, just a week ago, we put out uh, the request for the applications. Yeah, it was pretty quick. Yeah, so we put out the request for the applications. And as always, we get uh, a lot of immediate apps, uh, which does feel nice, but is also very stressful. Because again, if you have never casted a game like this, or if you don't know anything about it, it is horrible to do because it is not fun to tell people that they are not playing. And there are a lot of people you want to cast, unfortunately, at least in the mole, uh, where we want to keep it to 12 at a maximum. That is, you can't cast everybody. It just yeah, is what I it is. absolutely hate saying no to people. It is very hard. The casting process, I think, is one of the most difficult parts of hosting games like this. But yeah, so we initially had our um, written application and we um, chose people based on that for interviews. And we did um, some video interviews over this last week as well. Um, and then had some long conversations and narrowed it down to our 11 players and our one mole. So everyone applied as like one pool and just based on the interviews, which Honestly, we love the interviews this season. That's one of the reasons why we wanted to make these videos. Um, yeah, everyone is in that same pool and we chose the mole just based on who we were most interested in seeing be the mole, uh, but we'll get to that later. Um, so the bulk of this, like I said, is gonna be our cast assessment. So why don't we just jump through our 11 players, Spencer, and then mm -hmm. talk a little bit about them um their experience what we know about them and go from there does that sound good sounds good so our first person looking at my handy cheat sheet on my phone um is adam doyle we're gonna go in alphabetical order because we're creative mm -hmm. um so yeah adam we know has played one mole org is actually the one mole org i have played um which that was like at least two years ago at this point i think yeah he, Benibu. did also apply for a different season of ours and we ultimately cut him. I can't remember which one. 
but he did that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm very excited to see him play because at least from my knowledge of him, he is a very pro pot kind of player. He, uh, at least I remember there was one assignment that we had. It was, um, I think it was a perch type assignment. Um, and like Adam was the hero, saved the day, got like 20 times more than anyone else. And like won us a whole bunch of money, which is a choice. I wouldn't have done that choice in the mo, but good for him, I guess. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and so I'll say something else to put things into perspective if you're not familiar with, with our game. So Spencer and I host uh, uh, Who is the Mole together. Uh, so this will be our fifth season of that. I also host um, a Survivor org um, based on that TV show um, by myself. So that's gone on for five different seasons. And I've also done one season of the challenge. Um, And then Spencer, myself, and our good friend Shannon have also hosted together one game based on the very short-lived TV show, Who Done It? So this, I think, all together will be season 12 that I've hosted. Um, So Adam is actually the only player in this cast who I have hosted more than once, um, which that's exciting for me. So this will be Adam's fourth game actually and he's I adore him he is great he is very kind he's also very um shady snarky and fine at work. Times. Yeah. <laughs> yes shady snarky um I think he will be very pro pop but I know he said that he wants to be a little bit more cagey this time so to speak so to throw people off the scent but I do think he's someone who can bring in some money so I'm excited to see what he can do I mean he made it pretty far in his only other mole game so you know that might say something Mm -hmm. certainly one to watch yeah I think so I think so and it's just an interesting game like anyone could you know pull this out we learned that last season oh my gosh um but Adam I think is one to watch from the start Mm -hmm. um should we move on to the next one sure yeah so next we have Alex um and Alex is actually has a special place in my heart. Um, so it's my first time hosting Alex, but he's well known in org circles, uh, at least as far as the mole is concerned. He's played a number of those games at this point. Um, but he was actually, his most recent stint, he was the mole in um, a game that I was also in that took place on Discord. And it is the uh, first mole game that I myself won. So I was able to unmask Alex as the mole. So since then, I've, I've really been interested in seeing him play in our series. Um, so I don't know about you, but I'm like really excited. I think he's going to bring a lot of like really good energy just based on his interview. He had a really good interview, one of my favorites. And I, it's going to kind of become apparent as we keep going. But this cast is very interesting and became very clear during the interviews and the applications that as a whole, this group is much more pro pot size they're very like wanting to work for the team and wanting to earn a bunch of money um but alex was one of the few people who is you know screw that i'm gonna sabotage i'm gonna cause mayhem and you know Mm -hmm. it is he's looking out for number one he doesn't really care what everyone else is doing Mm -hmm. so hopefully he can last long to cause like (laughs) a lot of issues energy will be very needed but more than anything like i think he's going to be like that distracting player you know, he's, mm. he's very good at like creating noise, so to speak, in, in assignments and, you know, like throws players off their games and gets them to like do things that are suboptimal for themselves or for the team. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I think he's going to be like a really good person to watch and just a fun person for us to host. And I agree, I want him to hang around for a while. <laughs> but it's so hard with the whole group. There's not, there's not like anyone I want to go first, but mm-hmm. for the full souls purpose of him screwing with the pot uh for the sake of uh jamie's money (laughs) i want him there (laughs) so he could save a few bucks thank thank you i mean i'm sure our reigning winner enjoyed what the the 13 (laughs) dollars that she won last season something like that Mm -hmm. it was a bit more than that but it was not much not not much more than i think it was maybe 20 at the most (laughs) yeah so at least the expectation is the group is to earn more than that but who's to say because i feel like memory serves that like some groups are just more pro pot but like incompetence goes a long way and Mm -hmm. we design our assignments in a way that like it is it's not very common that like one person who is very pro pot could like save the day or anything like that 
Um, it, it's a lot of work that they'll have to do for some of these, and it is stacked against them. So it, we're doing as much as we can to keep that pot low, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So who do we have next, Spencer? Uh, the next one is Brian, who is our reigning winner from the last org that we did, Who Done It. Mm-hmm. Um, and so yeah, that was the first game that he had played with us. Uh, he he is also a player to watch because it was it was very fun to watch him play Who Done It because I was surprised. Like most of these orgs have a very social element to it, but I was surprised that like during all of these casting things, people will say like, you know, I'm going to be in up, up in everyone's DMs. I'm going to be talking to everybody, but very few people actually mean that. Brian absolutely means that. We saw it in Who Done It. He was talking to everybody all the time, driving us crazy with all of the group chats that he was creating. It was a bit of a nightmare. Often so, sending the same message to multiple people. Which we respect, but- Yeah, I respect uh, it. Uh, I would expect more of the same of that. And um, since he did end up winning that, we know that he's an extremely good note taker. Mm -hmm. um, we The expectation at least is for him to do well in this. So I'm excited to see yeah, how well yeah. he can do. Yeah, and, and, and if you're not familiar with Who Done It, it's a murder mystery game that involves like a lot of like higher order thinking and just a lot of like um, uh, a different kind of strategizing, but I'd say a lot of strategizing being social can certainly help at points. And, you know, Brian is an extremely thorough note taker, as Spencer said, like he basically knocked that game out of the park. Um, so this game functions different, but similar at the same time. I, I do think, and you know, I've said this a couple of times already, but I do especially think that Brian is um, well positioned to possibly do good, really good this season. Um, you know, if he plays his cards right. I actually also think that he is uh, well positioned socially just going into it. We'll talk a little bit about that more later, but I think he has some connections he can use. Mm -hmm. On to the um, next one, I guess, or do we have yeah, more? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. So next is David. Um, so David's an interesting case. Like, as I was going through this and thinking about the season, I think he's one of the biggest wild cards in a mm -hmm. way, especially for the men. Absolutely. Um, and as you'll see, as we go through the cast, we do have more men in the cast than women, and that is really a function of we had a lot more men apply mm -hmm. this time. Um, but we adore all of the women in this cast as will become apparent. So, and who knows, actually, so last season was our all-star season. We had a cast of 13. It was eight men and five women. And our final four ended up being all women. So, you know, mm -hmm. who's to say what will just happen this time? We're keeping hope alive. Yes. Um, but David is a weird one because he's played some mole, he says, but it's been several years since he's played a game like this. So I don't know how that's going to translate. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Um, I do I do like his personality. He can be like a bit laid back, um, a bit subtle, but also like <laughs> I think there there's some there's some humor there too, which I think will come out and will be will be fun to watch. Mm -hmm. you, Spencer, your immediate thoughts on David? Yeah, I, I was very shocked when he when we got his application because I'm I'm a little familiar with him. I did play one org with him, um, not that we were super close or anything, mm -hmm. um, but I uh, know he his personality is is I don't necessarily want to say aloof, but it's kind of what I'm going with here, like. So it's, he'll be an interesting kind of like, and it's not saying like he won't be like active and present, but like his whole personality is that he's going to be a bit more to the background of it all. Mm -hmm. And he did mention in his application that he doesn't really like the whole sabotaging assignments to uh, look shady, which again is an interesting thing. He said that his strategy is more to like throw out uh, weird theories and misdirect people and just kind of like make up nonsense. So that is a bit more of a novel approach to the mole mm -hmm. that I'm very curious to see if he can make that one work. Yeah, and just to see what people bite on. So like, mm -hmm. I think he's really interested in seeing people's reactions. And so the interesting thing with David is so, you know, so far I've said I've already hosted Adam before, I've hosted Brian before, and I've also hosted David before. David's an interesting case because I have also, like Brian, only hosted him one time. And it was actually the second ever org that I hosted. So it's been quite some time since I have seen him. It's been, what, four years at this point? About Something that, like which that. is very weird to think about. But yeah, um, 
yeah, I this one goes back deep into the Genie Org history book, so I'm excited to see him again. Um, Hoomst is next. Um, it looks like next is Dexter. Oh yeah. Well, I guess I'll let you lead. Sure. Dexter, sure. you know more about Dexter than I do. <laughs> Yeah, so Dexter is pretty cool, I think, so mm -hmm. far. Um, I do know of Dexter. I would not say that we're close or anything. Um, our main connection is actually, um, I've played several mole games myself, and you know, playing the mole and watching the mole really inspired us to create this series. Um, but Dexter and I were both in a game, another mole org on Facebook, and the first season of that, Dexter was the mole. And the third season of that, I was the mole. So like we have that same kind of pedigree. Um, and funny enough, that was the first mole org I ever played. I was the mole, which is, you know, an experience unto itself. Um, but we didn't connect until much later, but that's something that we knew we always had in common was that we kind of had that same starting point, so to speak. Um, that's actually the last game Dexter has played and it has been probably about five years. So I was, quite surprised to get an app from him as well. I've never hosted him before. I only know that he had been a mole in this series um, or in that other series. But just meeting with him and interviewing him was a lot of fun, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's, like a lot of people stood out, but he's someone who definitely stood out. And ended up being one of our longest interviews just because he was so personable and had a lot to say about everything. Mm -hmm. um, I know he said he wants to take on a leadership role in a lot of the assignments, which will be interesting because I think we have a few people who kind of want to fulfill that archetype. So we'll see how that goes. How about you, Spencer, your thoughts? Yeah, I did really like his interview and I'm I'm just so curious because like, I mean, I wish I did see him as the mole because like the way he talked during his interview, he was expressed in a lot of very like pro pot kind of sentiments like most people were. And you know, I was I was very curious to see how he would actually mole. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I'm just yeah excited for him, and I do think that he would be yeah with the whole leader thing. Because there's quite a few people in the group that want to be leaders, and so I feel like I'm being very repetitive here. I'm so sorry, but oh, well, you're fine. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see how he clashes because he was a very like I don't know, one of the I think one of the kindest people that we interviewed. I think it's fair to say um, it was very sweet and very kind. A lot of things. So like when these kind of clashes happen for like people trying to vie for leadership, um, I'm curious to see what his reaction will be and how he's going to respond to those and more of the abrasive people that are in the cast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely interested. It's. Because he's definitely, I think, wants to take on that leader archetype, but is also just very friendly. So mm -hmm. we'll see how that plays itself out in this group. Um, so it looks like next we have um, Grando. Mm -hmm. Spencer, I will let you jump in with all the <laughs> thoughts here first. Um, I'm. I was very excited to get Grando's application because he has. He's a bit notorious in the org world, at least the ones that I know of, where he he's very much a potster, likes to cause drama, likes to cause shit. Uh, he is more, like, he, he certainly always tries to win, but like his main purpose isn't to win. It seems his main purpose is to kind of fuck with people. Which, Most often, yeah. Yes. <laughs> which sounds perfect for them all. That's the energy I would love to see. Mm -hmm. So I was very excited for that. Um, and it was his whole application was an interview was interesting because he didn't he didn't come with the kind of energy that I initially expected he had said that he'd just recently seen a few seasons of the mole and he really did like it and since this is his first org that he's ever played um he for the did mole. yeah yeah for the mole sorry uh he he did kind of say like how he didn't want to be the mole and he wanted to like try seeing it as a player to kind of get his feel of it and he really didn't come out as being like he didn't want to be like that personality he normally is. He not that he wasn't like going to be super pro pot, but that like he was going to try to be more of a team focused and oriented player. So I'm just very fascinated to see like if he can keep that kind of initial plan or if he's going to slip into those old habits. And then I'm going to be very happy watching that. <laughs> yeah, I am very intrigued to see how this would go. Um, you know, in his written application, he, you know, said, you know, I'm well known as a liar in this uh, community um, in games. 
um, that I can also read people really well. So I'm, I'm just very intrigued to see where it will go, just knowing his personality um, and how he tends to play games. I am also extremely excited, I will admit, um, because, you know, I've said that David goes way back in uh, Jamie Org history, while Grando goes back even further. He goes about back as far as anyone can go, because I have hosted him only once before, and it was in the very first game that I ever hosted. And yeah, we saw him kind of implode pretty quickly that season. Um, but he in was an attempt on it to screw with did, people. And he did make an impression. But it's very exciting for me to see someone who I hosted in my very first game and who I have not seen since in a game that I've had. So, you know, I was very glad to see him, you know, apply and do very well in the um, application process. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. Ooh, the next one is... Next one is Jessica, which she she's a bit of a mystery. Um, so I know that she had played. There's some other orgs that I kind of vaguely follow, not super close, but like I get invited to the group, so I see what happens. And she was in one of those recent ones. And I think I think could be wrong. I think that she was in it with Grando, so there might be some kind of connection there. Um, but she happened to be in one of the groups that we like advertised that we were casting. So she happened to apply it. I don't really know much about her. her interview was really great. I really liked her, but she is one of the bigger question marks of the whole group. She mm -hmm. didn't seem to be super familiar with the mole as a whole. So she could come at this and just like absolutely miss, not get the whole concept of it, crap the bed on the first test and could be a very mm -hmm. easy first boot. Or, you know, she might like, she might have enough of that chaotic unknown energy that she's able to get momentum going. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. yeah. So Jessica is an interesting one. And I'll say at this point, so we have Jessica and then we have four other people who are like players to discuss. Um, starting with Jessica, I have not hosted anyone left um, who are going to discuss. So like, it's a lot of new territory. Um, only one of the other of the five people we have left, including Jessica, what I say that I knew um, before casting. So there's a lot of like just unknown territory with the people that we have left to talk about. Jessica, I really liked her interview. She came off as, you know, very sweet, but I also liked her, how she could, you know, use something that had been challenging her, challenging for her in orgs to her advantage this time. She explicitly talked about like not being great at a lot of different types, types of uh, org challenges or assignments and like using that to maybe get some suspicion on her. I hope that that comes to fruition because, you know, I think that that would help her in the game. I just, I don't know how well she's going to do. I hope that she does better than, than expectations, but I question how connected she'll be at the start of the game to other people. And I question like how she'll like think about how to do the quizzes initially, just because she, I know she has less experience with the mole watching it, mm -hmm. but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. And as we have seen before, guessing can get you really far. If you just go into that test and you just click a bunch of answers and you just submit legitimately not a bad strategy. So maybe she'll do that. Who knows? We take a moment of silence and praise for Barb, <laughs> reigning mole champion. Uh, we love Barb. If you do not know Barb, you should shout out to her all the time. Amazing. <laughs> and yes, well-known history of guessing. Mm -hmm. So after Jessica is Nick, right? Yes. So Nick is the only person left who I am familiar with. He has not played any of our games before. Um, he, I will admit, you know, um, I guess this is like our full um, disclosure with everything with this series. So Nick applied for season one of the mole and that was a very challenging cast just because we had so many applications so quickly. So we had to make, we cut far more people than we were actually able to accept in the cast. Mm -hmm. We ended up with a cast of 12 and Spencer, you can confirm this, like he was number 13 on our list. Yeah, yeah, it was, it, it it's unfortunate. I was the person that ultimately had to make the call. We were just like, it was down to one person. We had two people we wanted to cast and Jamie let me have the ultimate pick. And so I picked to cast someone over Nick. And so Nick just missed out. And this is the first time that he has actually reapplied. So I'm excited that he finally has reapplied and that we can now cast yes. him. We were very thrilled to get his application. I think that he, again, will be someone to to watch this season. So I have personal experience with Nick in the mole. So 
he and I actually played together in um, the game that I was the mole. So it's been so long now. It's so weird. It's been like, what, three and a half years, I think. Um, but, you know, in that game, we were actually allies for, for a little bit. And then I guess I pulled the wool over his eyes a little too much. And I felt a little guilty about that because I really liked him. But I'm hoping he has some more success this time. I think he has proven in other games that he can be very successful in the mole. Um, I think that what can get in his way is maybe some tunnel vision, you know, um, which is not just unique to him. I think this, this game kind of preys on tunnel vision and confirmation bias, but if he can like deflect from that, I, I really think he could go very far. I agree. <laughs> Retweet as the kids say, I don't think the kids say that anymore. Mm -hmm. It's fine. I also think he has someone else who's going to be very pro team. Like he has mm -hmm. shown that in the past. So we'll see. Uh, I think he could also be a leader for the team, which could maybe cause some friction. We'll see. Mm. Um, I don't know how that will go though. Cause it's funny. Cause I think the people who most want to be leaders have very pre pleasant personalities. <laughs> so we'll see kind of what that looks like. A lot of respectful disagreeing that amounts to nothing. Yes. Which isn't quite the drama I'm going for, but hey, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. um, the next person is uh, Shandy. Spencer, your thoughts on Shandy? A big fan. I think my favorite interview. She was up there. It was a really good interview. <laughs> yeah, we loved Shandy's interview. And it's not mm -hmm. just because it was another one of the longest ones. It was just mm -hmm. because it was, it was, she's very personable. Mm hmm and she is very much a, an unknown to us, um, or at least from the interview we gathered, is very new to the org world. That I think if I followed the interview correctly, this would be her third org. Um, I know she's at, she was playing a Big Brother game, had at least played one Survivor game before that. Um, yeah, she's definitely I new. I remember. I know she's at least pretty new to this mm -hmm. to this world. Definitely has not done anything with the mole before was talking to us about her researching it while we were doing the interview. Mm -hmm. um, so again, very like a very much a question mark in a lot of ways. Yeah. I don't know how she's at least talking about doing the research. So hopefully she'll like figure out the good strategies and like yeah. the need to spread early on and all of that, but could very much be a big question mark in terms of the group. Yeah. I think she'll be very social in the time mm -hmm. that she is here. I do think that that's true for her. I think she has some connections maybe that could help her as well. We'll see how that pans out. But what I what I sense, and I don't have a lot of data to support this, but just based on small comments that she said in her interview, mm -hmm. I get the sense that she might be willing to be a little devious this game with mm -hmm. people. And I really hope that that's the case because you know, I adored Shandy's interview and I would love to see that side of her come out in, the, in this game and like, you know, that propel her further in it mm -hmm. she seems to me someone i think if there's advantages i think she's going to say screw the team and go for the advantages mm -hmm. which i do great. Too. love it yeah you know more power to her and then i think next we have tom mm -hmm. so tom has played a uh, two uh mole orgs in the past but you know never any in in my series, I had I had not really I had not really met him before at the interviews. Mm -hmm. um, he does say that he's almost always right in unmasking the mole, be it in an org or be it within the TV show. Um, I will love to um, uh, challenge that and see how that pans out. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's certainly possible, could be, um, but you know, I. I think when someone says something like that, I like to throw down the gauntlet and see if they can rise to the challenge, right? I mean, come on, mm -hmm. Spencer. Oh, I, I agree. He did. I think he had said that usually by like two, round two or three. Knows he can. He pretty much knows who the mole is, mm -hmm. which hopefully won't be the case here. Not to say like I want Tom to lose, but like I just hope our mole does really well and that no one knows who the mole is that early. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, I'm excited because like, I do think that there is potential, at least the way he talked about it, he seems to be like that he essentially picks like a, a handful of his like most suspicious people and kind of just like really focuses on them, which you can do very early on. And like the early tests are obviously a bit of a crapshoot, but that could very easily backfire. So 
it's weird. Like I would, ex- I could see, ex- I could see Tom going very far, but I could also see Tom uh, going very early. So <laughs> yeah, <he's, laughs> it, it, it yeah. could be feast or famine with him. Like mm-hmm. we'll, we'll really see, but he had a lot of personality and a lot of mm-hmm. snark in his interview. So, you know, that's something he'll bring at least. Yeah. Big fan of the interview. He seems like if that there is like, if there is someone he doesn't agree with, he will make that abundantly clear. Um, which should be fun. I'd be a big fan of that, obviously. Mm-hmm. Okay, so our final player in the cast, uh, Spencer, is Victoria. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on Victoria? Um, similar to Shandy and Jessica. Very big question mark. And this one we got a lot clear. This is on her second 90% positive. This is her second or Yeah, ever. this is her second or which makes her the least experienced player in the entire cast in terms of like the gaming world, uh, at least, you know, online reality games. Mm-hmm. So she was playing a Big Brother game and now is doing this one. And it was very similar. She didn't have a whole lot of mole experience. I don't think she'd ever watched the show. Yeah, she's um, actively watching it now. <laughs> which is always a help. Uh, it's a good place to start. Um, so, oh God, where do I go with this? She, e, yeah, I mean, she seems like she'll be very extroverted and social while she plays mm-hmm. the games. Um, and she, which is similar to Shandy as well, they didn't really like necessarily come out super pro pot or super anti pot. Mm-hmm. Um, so I could see her being a bit more of like a background kind of person that does end up misleading the group, whether intentionally or unintentionally. Mm-hmm. Um, so I am excited to see that. And she she was a great interview as well. <laughs> yeah, she's another one who had just a very lovely interview. You know, um, I didn't know how it would go because she doesn't really know the show all that mm-hmm. much. But you know, at the end of the day, that didn't end up mattering to us just because of like her personality shining through and us just being very invested in seeing how she would do in a game like this. She was very excited for it. Mm-hmm. And she just seemed to have a lot of just, um, you know, positive energy. She came off as pretty extroverted. Um, and, you know, I, I think she could be pretty adaptable. That's my hope. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So that's everyone, Spencer. Yeah, that's that's the players, at least. We still have one uh, saboteur mm-hmm. uh, that we got to get to. Yeah, so maybe, do, do you think it actually makes sense for us to transition a bit into, like, how we chose the mole um, into that piece? Like, how... how... I, I guess, without re- too revealing about our final process, because I don't want to put stuff out there that's going to make people assume that they can figure out who the mole is. People are insane. You you can't figure out why we pick the people we pick mm-hmm. because it's always surprising to us at the end of the day. We're usually shocked by our own picks too. Yes, yes, that is true. <laughs> because I, I will say like, this is a pick that a person we ended up going with. When I was getting the applications, at first I didn't really see it. If you had told me like pre-interviews, like who was going to be the mole, would not have happened. And even while we were doing the interviews, I don't think I would have said this one happened, but like we had talked about and we came to the conclusion this is the one that we agreed upon ultimately. Yeah, it took us a long while to settle, but we are, I want to say we're very excited mm-hmm. yes, about yes. who it is. We are absolutely excited. Um, So we can say, Spencer, like in our applications, we ask everyone to say whether they wanted to be the mole or not. Um, mm-hmm. It was about half and half. Seven people said they wanted to be the mole. Five people in our cast said they did not want to be the mole. Um, but all I'll say is when we got down to our final pool of people, it was actually 50, 50, um, which was funny. <laughs> yeah. Like half of them said they had wanted to be the mole and half of them said they didn't. So, you know, it's not just about that. Sometimes we see something in a person mm-hmm. that we're just very intrigued by, um, that, that, you know, we're, we're interested in putting them in this position. Um, so yeah, I guess maybe just introduce who we picked, Spencer. So if you hadn't figured it out yet, um, hopefully you have. Uh, Amanda is our mole of the season, mm-hmm. um, which I feel like to the people that know her is a very surprising pick because she is very big in mole orgs and just orgs in general. Um, and she has a bit of a reputation at like, 
not that I really knew her much beforehand. She did play, I guess I can be the one to say this. She did play the whodunit org that we just hosted and came in like mm-hmm. And that's place, the only game that either of us have hosted her in. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she kind of expressed that normally when she plays, she is, she has a reputation for being very pro pot. She doesn't like to deal with people's crap. She goes very heavily for the pot when she can. Yeah, um, very much a team player, very loyal to. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, I guess I'll let you go. Yeah, so maybe you want me to talk a little bit about why we did choose her? Sure. Okay. So Amanda is someone who she did say she wanted to be the mole. Um, And, you know, that, uh, which we said before, doesn't always matter all that much, but she did say she wanted to be the mole. And I know that she has played several mole games before and has never had that opportunity. So part of it is I thought that that would be a really cool experience for her. You know, we wanted her to be able to finally have that. But also, honestly, like, I think this will be a good challenge for her more than anything. And like, I think we were both invested in that storyline of like the Mm -hmm. challenge that it's going to be for her and how she can succeed in that for two reasons. One of those being that she is well known as Spencer said, for being a very pro pop person. And also she will actually be in this cast with a lot of people that she knows from different spaces. So they will know her and know how she typically plays. So, um, I think she has her work cut out for her, but I want, I'm hoping that she can take from this season that she is more than capable of doing this job and will do it very well. So Mm -hmm. I really hope that that's a take home and it's something that she can show herself through the experience. Mm -hmm. Um, How about you, Spencer? Anything that you would add for like reasons why we did choose Amanda? Um, I guess ultimately a bit, or not ultimately, but one of the things that it was is that like, for those who don't know last season, we had an extremely successful mole, went undetected the whole season, somehow managed to pull it off. I watched it. I still don't really believe it. It was very surreal to experience. Um, and so, like, you know, at this point, it's like we we have had very successful moles before. We're playing with house money, so we're very willing to play it risky if we want to go for some that, like, nor- like if you were to look at these people on paper, it's a bit more of an unorthodox pick. Like, we are just a lot more perceptive Mm -hmm. to that now and a lot more willing to chance it on someone like that and i do think that she'll do good because i because people love to metagame it so part of me even expects that like at least early on people metagame and be like no they can't why would they pick amanda she's seen as so pro pot like they would never actually pick her as the mole um so (laughs) Mm -hmm. even part of that i think could especially work in her advantage early on um yeah, I, I'm I'm very excited. I'm very curious. Yeah. This is one of the I'm I'm always curious for the mole. It all it is always such a hard choice for us to pick the mole. No matter who it is that we end up going with, we always sit here and be like, it's always hesitant. It's like, oh no, should we have actually gone with that person? Maybe, maybe we were wrong. Maybe we should have picked this other person. And we have been very lucky where we have had amazing moles every single time. And I yes. you know, I still expect that to continue. Not to like put on pressure, but like mm-hmm. um I, I have faith that Amanda can do a very good job in this. Um yeah. Yeah, and something I think that, um, you know, if you follow our series, something that will be known to you um, is that, so Amanda is our fifth mole, and she's actually going to be our fourth female mole, um, which is, you know, not reductionistic, you know, it's not that we purposely look for a female each time, like like I said, it's it's multiple factors, mm-hmm. um, and just like for perspective, like we I, we've had moles that have some mole game experiences we've had a mole that had no ga- mole game experience whatsoever to this day has had... not seen an episode of the mole i don't think <laughs> yeah and a mole that's had a lot of mole game experiences also interestingly amanda is uh, besides all stars all stars it really doesn't count though because you had to have been a returning player mm-hmm. apart from all stars amanda is our first mole that we've ever cast that has actually played one of you know my slash our games before um, it's always been newbies otherwise. So that's, mm-hmm. that's an exciting thing, I think. Um, so yeah, I'm interested in how people are going to try to metagame this. Like people come up with those wild theories of like why someone has to be the mole, um, mm-hmm. and why someone cannot be the mole and they're almost always wrong, uh, but it's fine. Um, and then I'll pull my hair out and scream when like someone comes up with some asinine theory about like why the mole has, like they're right about the mole, but like whatever 
crazy theory they came up with is just absolutely wrong. And I'm like, no, at least be like, at least have good logic. Why don't you have good logic if you're going to be right? <laughs> he does do that. <laughs> it's um, fine. So, so yeah, that's what that's what we're working with um, for our cast and our mole. And oh my gosh, I'm so ready for this journey. I'm excited to work closely with Amanda and, and, and her role this 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 game. That'll be fun. Mm-hmm. Another interesting thing is so Amanda is from the UK, if you did not know. So we'll be dealing with a uh, time zone difference as well between our mole and us and also our mole and the rest of the cast. But, you know, that's similar to last season. But last season it was um, 12 hours, which is more difficult in some ways, easier in others. It's, it, it's weird. Especially because especially because her previous mole is insane and would just get up at like 6 a.m. her time regularly for the sake of doing orgs, mm-hmm. which... Good for her. I could not do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not committed enough for that. Yeah, I'll also say looking at our cast as a whole, you know, um, I, I am inter- I'm really intrigued of how it's going to function together. Um, we do our best to try to cast a diverse group of people in terms of demographics. I think there's ways that we can continue to grow in that. Um, mm-hmm. But we really, that is something that we both really care about and like really try to take a look at. Um, that said, like something that I'm in, very excited about this season is this may be the first org that we've ever hosted that, um, you know, not only is the majority of the players outside of the U.S., but also like the single highest populated country of players is not the U.S. So we will have five players from Canada, um, four from the U.S., one from the U.K., one from uh, Belgium, and one from South Africa. So, mm-hmm. yeah, what are your thoughts? How do you feel about that, Spencer? I'm excited. I love it. It's something I take pride in the games that we host that, like, truly, your time zone does not matter. Like, um, so I love to, like, see how the game works with people in these different time zones working together to complete these assignments. It, like, we've had two moles who are Australian. We've had a winner from the Philippines. We've had a winner from Australia. So I, it just it's me like doubling down even more. And I just love the fact that like, you don't have to be in the U S to succeed in these games. You don't have to be in Eastern standard time. Like it seems like a million orgers are like you truly, Mm -hmm. at least for our games, how we structure them. We put a lot of effort into making them more accessible for everyone that does want to try to play it, that like you can succeed. It is extremely possible for you to do it. And it has been done and again and again. So obviously I'm hoping for a continuation of that. I would prefer for an American not to win again. Screw the Americans. Um, <laughs> nothing against them. If you win, I'm sure I'll be happy about it too. It's whatever. Mm-hmm. It's nice when you have a cast of people where at least on paper, like I'd be excited for anyone to win at this mm-hmm. point. We'll see how that continues, you know, as we get to really know people in the game. But Oh know. yeah, I'm sure I'm sure I'll be annoyed by some people. <laughs> Yeah, but it's usually in good fun in these mm-hmm. games, especially the mole. Like, I don't think that we've had someone in the mole where I'm like, this person, I'd be so miserable if they won. Like, that's just not how it functions. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm just, I'm excited. I'm, I'm super pumped. Um, but that said, maybe we can talk about a little bit more tea that we know, Spencer. <laughs> oh, with all of our connections. So unfortunately, is a problem with all orgs. You can't avoid it. People tragically have friends and they know each other um yes. for the mole what that where that generally stems from is the mole is a pretty niche community overall mm-hmm. we do get some like surprise apps every time you know we talked about a number of them this time but it is a reasonably small community of super fans who play these games so they tend to make their rounds you know so like i said myself i've played the mole with a number of these people at this point at least a, a few mm-hmm. um so, you know, that's just, I think, bound to happen. So with that, we know some people who have some connections, right, Spencer? Oh, yeah. So are we going to out them? Yes. <laughs> All <I> say, out. <laughs> yes. yes. So um, do we want to start with the biggest one or do we want to start with... I want to start one? with the funny. Yeah, the biggest one, the funniest I'll one. Let you, I'll let you do that. So <laughs> Shandy and Victoria are very close friends in real life. They describe themselves as best friends in real life. This, they are both, were before they were applying for this, we're both playing the same Big Brother game. And when we initially got their apps, we didn't know that. We had, I guess, a little mole of our own, a little birdie uh, put us in the know about that, um, which, you know, is fine because it's unavoidable. And like, 
it did certainly work to their advantage that we thought they had very good applications and very good interviews. So they certainly put in the effort to make it hard for us not to cast them, even with us knowing this knowledge. Yeah, they both um, like were stellar interviews. Um, and even funnier was the fact that during Shandy's interview, she named dropped Victoria quite a few times. <laughs> and, and it was I, even funnier because in Victoria's interview, she's like, yeah, I have this friend mm -hmm. Who like you know we did this org together and it was really fun and this friend uh, said I should think about this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least Victoria kept it anonymous, but Shandy just met name dropped Victoria and I was like the audacity of this woman. <laughs> I had to I had to work really hard to hold it in like poker face the interview and not just react. Yeah, it made us love her even more honestly. <laughs> so needless uh, to say, that'll be a very close bond. I think. Mm -hmm. um, I am intrigued to see if they will um, lie to each other at all about their suspicions. I am hoping for it. I am thinking mm -hmm. on it. I am manifesting that mm -hmm. just because that's more fun to see in a game like this. But, you know, we've never had something like this where people are actual best friends in real life. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it'll function much different than some of the other very strong org connections that we have. You know, I don't know that it's that much different because like they could still lie they could still tell the truth same with mm -hmm. these other connections what are your thoughts there spencer oh oh yeah especially because like we at least did our best to try to plant the seeds during the interview about like oh maybe it is a good idea to lie huh you ever consider lying mm -hmm. stab each other in the back please we beg you um <laughs> so hopefully that will take our words of wisdom from the interview mm -hmm. uh to heart and at least not be the most open about everything you know, an important anecdote to remember is that we did have a contestant in our All-Star season who she was a mole the first time she played. So when she came back for All-Stars, was the first time she had actually played the mole as a contestant. And right away, she had divulged who her number one suspect was, and that person stayed in the game for a very long time. And so as it went and she felt more that right about who she was suspecting, she kind of realized, oh, you know, maybe it wasn't a good idea of me to just, like, tell everyone that I suspect this person Maybe it's not like the best thing to just be so honest about who my who I'm answering on the test. Which that is true. That was not a good idea, but it is even funnier because she was wrong all along anyway. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it worked out in our parts. We were entertained by it. But if she were right, <laughs> I would have some <laughs> angry words to say about it. Oh my gosh, such a wild season mm -hmm. All-Stars was. Um, but yeah, so that's probably the closest one, but we do know that there's connections between other players. So for instance, I know that there's at least some degree of connection between like an Amanda, Dexter, Nick, and Alex contingency. Mm -hmm. I think that they have all played in the same series. They're all definitely big mole players. So I think that there'll be some connection there. Maybe, maybe some degree of a built-in coalition. We'll see. What's fun there is that, um, you know, Amanda is in that group and I hope that she spins them around her little finger, um, you know. Um, but Amanda, I think, is probably the most connected person in the game or very close to it. Mm -hmm. She knows a lot of people in this cast and that just makes it more fun, honestly. Mm -hmm. We'll see how that goes. And the other person that we think is the most connected, at least based on our minor research, was Brian. Um, cause we do know that Brian has connections to Shandy and Victoria through some other org. Uh, I don't, we don't necessarily know how close they are, but like, at least it's appeared to us that they are. They are at least friendly. Yeah. Friendly towards each other. Um, Brian was also during that who done it org, Brian was very close with Amanda. Um, so again, that's another interesting thing to see how that works with the mole, but that is like had Amanda not in the mole, that would be a connection that we anticipated to happen. Um, who else? I know Brian has. Oh, oh he's Adam. Also friends with Adam. Adam. Mm -hmm. So that's another connection. So Brian is positioned well. Um, mm -hmm. It's how he uses those connections, especially because, you know, I think realistically, Shandy and Victoria might be more honest with each other than mm -hmm. they are with him. So we'll see how he how he navigates that. Adam says he wants to be more cagey this season. We'll see how he navigates that. And obviously Amanda will only be doing him so much good this season. So that puts a wrench in some of those plans. But still, mm -hmm. I think he's positioned pretty well going into this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at the very least, like alliances, coalitions, whatever you want to call them, can only get you so far in the mall because like mm -hmm. 
you can never truly trust what anyone's saying and like you will never truly see how they are taking the yeah. test so like you know he might have all these connections with people but you know when we actually start the game and we go out there he still might not ever actually suspect the correct mm -hmm. person through those connections just, just because he has connections doesn't mean they're going to point him to the correct path yes exactly um, exactly i mean you're more likely to be wrong than you are to be right mm -hmm. um and then the final one that we did note that is a possible connection we don't know if this is actually true or how strong it is but we do know that like another org series has featured um, David, Grando, and Jessica at different mm -hmm. points. So there may be some connection there. If so, I do think it'll probably be at least a degree less strong than some of these other ones, but it is a possibility that, you know, mm -hmm. the surprise if something forms there. Yeah. And of course, we don't know all of these people's gaming history. So there's probably mm -hmm. gonna be other connections that we just don't know about, but those are the ones that like going into it, we're pretty confident in. Yeah, tragically, we're not like the best snoops. Uh, <laughs> we didn't put in that much effort to try to like figure out everyone's connections because we'd be here all day. And then... we need to hire a little birdie. We need our own personal deep throat. We do. We need to outsource a deep throat and then low key also outsource casting next time. We can still pick them all, but like someone else got to do this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just telling people they're not playing crap. Mm -hmm. And actually, Spencer, I realized this. Do you want to know something that's funny? um you know that we can say when people say oh we we picked another female mole well first it doesn't matter we don't pick based on gender mm -hmm. um but also something that's really intriguing is that i mean like um it's been a while since we actually chose a female mm -hmm. for this role so like yeah our last um mole that we picked was um uh, Amanda Renee, although that was picked through random draw. So, you know, for all stars, that's what we did to prevent any kind of metagaming. So she became the mole through a, a lottery, so to mm -hmm. speak. So the last two mole slash hidden saboteurs that we picked was the mole three, it was Alex. Mm -hmm. And then we had a hidden saboteur, not a mole, but like a, a hidden, like a hidden player um, mm -hmm. in our whodunit game, which was Eddie. So mm -hmm. it's actually been a while since we picked a female. That is true. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. But don't don't I mark my words, we're gonna start this game and there'll be like five chats popping off being like the men are all shady. It's gotta be a man this time. They haven't picked a male mole and yada yada yada. So it's gonna be a man this time. Yep, probably. But oh well. Oh, maybe that's the joke. It's not it wasn't a man, it's a man. Duh. Ama amazing joke to go out on. Thank oh, you so much. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So I was, I know we've gone, we've rambled on for a while. So our, mm -hmm. we're losing our six viewers, um, but maybe we could end with some like bold predictions for the season. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, what I thought was maybe name three winner picks each, uh -huh. just, even before the game starts, mind mm -hmm. you, don't judge us when we're super wrong, um, but three possible winner picks. And then we'll name our, our two picks each who we think could be a first eliminated contestant. Mm -hmm. um so does that sound good yeah that's fine okay so do you want to go do you want to share all three winner picks or do you want to go back and forth with those oh let's go back and forth because it also gives me time to like panic and think really quickly okay um if i'm being honest i would say my first winner pick would probably be brian mm -hmm. That would be mine I, as well that's the obvious one yes i think he is very well situated in this cast but if he wins, it's not going to be just because like he's positioned in this way going in. And it's not what I'm trying to say. I think that'll help. But I think he'll win because he's a very meticulous and thorough player. He takes mm -hmm. a lot of notes and he's very detailed and he will reach out to everyone. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just don't see him going out early. Um, so yeah, he's a solid pick for me, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so obviously we both have Brian, so we'll just skip to our both number twos, but I'll go first. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to go for, even though I probably should save this one for last, but I still need to panic and think of another one. So I'm going to go for a dark horse pick. Um, I'm going to go with Victoria. I think I think that she could pull it off. She, she seemed to be willing to do the research, seemed really excited about them all and really interested in like how this whole thing kind of works. So hopefully she is able to like, I expect like she'll probably be lower on those early tests, but hopefully she's able to like 
you just barely make it through these tests. And then as she figures out the game, she'll be able to like pull that off into something. And then hopefully she'll be there at the last test and can maybe pull off a win. You know, I, I would love to see that personally. Mm -hmm. um, that would be pretty cool. Um, funny enough, like I think I have similar logic, but I ended at a different result. My, my winner pick, my sleeper pick is going to be uh, Shandy. Mm. Um, mainly because I like Victoria. I think that she's going to be personable with people. I do think that will be the case. Um, hopefully she puts in the work with the season, but I think that she may be more competitive and willing to be deceptive than, mm -hmm. um, you know, some of the other players. I hope that that is the case. Mm -hmm. you know, if she's willing to, you know, uh, lie to people and take in more information than she gives out, I think she could be positioned well and like be a surprise um, winner at the end. Mm -hmm. And now winner pick number three. Uh, yeah, this is hard. Uh, I think I have mine. It's, it's, I guess it's also kind of, I mean, it's, it's always so hard to pick beforehand, especially after our last season. A shocker win. Never would have predicted Barb winning in a million years. Uh, nothing Ever. against Barb. Adore her. Love we her. Love so Barb. happy it happened. Barb is shocked that she won. So it's not yes. like we were against Barb. I mean, it's a fever dream of the season. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess I'm gonna go for I think Alex could win because I know he's got a he's got a lot of that uh, mole org experience. So I wouldn't at least I would hope that he's like wouldn't take the test poorly at the start. I think he should be able to like get how it functions that he should be able to survive at least a couple of rounds. Mm -hmm. And I do think the fact that he was just a mole in the last mole org that he played that like that might be able to help him like no get him in the better head head space to like figure out what he should be looking for so i'm gonna go for alex as my third pick oh i have like three different ideas and i keep on circling back back and forth with them so i'll just land with the one that i think makes the most sense in the moment so i'll say david david Ooh. will be my third winner pick um been a while since he's played one of these but you know I think he has like a laid-back personality where he can you know actually sit back and observe um pretty effectively that's my guess he said he's done pretty well at these games in the past I don't know that he's won any of them but he typically makes it far and you know that's half the battle right there it's like if he can consistently make it far which he has I think he's positioned to potentially win this thing um you know I think he'll probably be meticulous enough in terms of like taking notes. That's my guess. I hope so. Um, so yeah, he, I think those are like barely my top three. Gotcha. <laughs> but I like, I like all of your picks mm -hmm. too, you know, and I, I don't think there's a bad pick amongst them. No, I don't think no. there's anyone that you could have said that I would have said, no, that's not going to happen. The field's pretty open this time. Mm -hmm. But that said, <laughs> Um, we're going to make some bold predictions of a possible first boot. And please, I hope anyone, when you, when the six of you watch this, that you don't take it personally. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I hope you prove us wrong too, because that is more fun. <laughs> yes. I hope you do prove us wrong. And, you know, like, I don't want anyone to go home first. I don't think anyone is destined to go home first in this cast. It's just like, based on the information that we know, who would we mm -hmm. guess? Um, I'll let you go first this time. With your first okay. Uh, I'm going to take the obvious one. Sorry. Uh, Jessica, but she jumps out to me as like a very possible first boot, um, tragically. Um, and, and it is just for reasons that we said she seems to be the person that knows the least about the game going into it. Um, and like, um, just like that, that can really work against you. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, like there is a bit of advantage that if you're more experienced with mole orgs, like you kind of understand better ways at taking the test even though like in the abstract it feels like there shouldn't be like a strategy to the test but like there is very much a good strategy to it and i don't necessarily know that she'll be able to figure it out that quickly hopefully she'll be able to make it pass and at least go a few rounds we should go all the way be great i'd love to see it but my gut is saying that she's probably not long for this game yeah unfortunately i agree that she could be a first um, eliminated person because you know she is less familiar so like you said she doesn't necessarily know how to take the quiz in a um, strategic way starting off and unlike some of the other players in a similar boat I don't know that she necessarily has the social connections with people who can like flat out tell her that mm -hmm. um, so that 
could be playing a role too. I hope we're wrong there because she'd be <laughs> lovely to have for a while. So we'll see. My other one's much harder. Like I, I'm, I'm really not sure. I'm gonna yeah. just like throw something at the wall and see how it happens. And I hope I don't offend anyone. Mm -hmm. um, my second one would probably be actually Tom, surprisingly. And that's only mm -hmm. because I think he's well seasoned with the mole, but I do sense there's like some, I don't know, like he might think that he knows who it is more soon than he actually does. So it could lead to like a poor quiz strategy of like, oh, I know it's this person so I can put everything on them, so to mm -hmm. speak. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, because like, as we've seen from grading all these tests, it is far more common that people get eliminated because they go too heavily on one person than it is that they go home because they spread too thin. And I do agree, Tom strikes me as someone that is going to be like, go very heavily and potentially a bit too early on, on a smaller group of people than he maybe should. Mm -hmm. um, God, I'm trying to think. Pardon me, was going to say Tom, but I'm trying to remember there was there was another person who expressed similar sentiments. Was it Dexter? I think didn't Dexter say that he had a similar strategy for the test? It might have been Dexter. Um, I can't remember specifically, but it wouldn't surprise me. I just feel like I got to go different. Got to throw some shade at someone besides Tom. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I, mean, I really like Tom. He had a mm -hmm. fun interview. I really liked his interview. He's a fascinating person. I yeah. could probably talk all day to Tom. I was fascinated by him <laughs> in a very good way, not in like any sort of negative way. Legitimately liked him. Um, maybe I should just go for an absolutely weird pick. Um, Why don't you just flex on me and choose one of my winner picks? <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. Um, no, I'm going to go for... I'm going to go for a really weird pick, but it wasn't one that you mentioned. I'm going to say Grando, actually, because I do think that, like, he he's watched the show, but I don't think that, like, again, it's a very similar experience. Like, he may have watched the show, but the show doesn't really convey a lot about what is actually good strategy. Like, you learn good strategy by, like, having played, having taken tests and, like, seeing how it actually works out or by seeing how grade scores happen. Mm -hmm. Like looking at scores, then you can logic out like, oh, this is like what tends to be good strategy. Um, I don't know if he'll be able to figure that out. So I think I think Grando is probably someone that is going to do what we expect and like go very heavily early on on a smaller group of people. Okay. So I'm going to go with okay. Grando as mine. So, so to recap, first boot predictions for you, you say Jessica or Grando and uh -huh. I say Jessica or Tom. And then mm -hmm. for winner predictions, you had said... Brian, Alex, and Victoria. And I had said Brian, Shandy, and David mm -hmm. for winner picks. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we can Let's all see. look like egg on our face when like Dexter goes all the way and is with who's someone else we just didn't mention at all. Nick. Nick, yeah. Our final two is gonna be Dexter and Nick, probably. Yeah, that that seems that that checks out. <laughs> but wow, Spencer, this ended up being quite long. We can um, ramble. I'm I'm sure the other ones will be much shorter. There was a lot more to cover in this than, yeah. than the other ones. I don't know about you. This was fun though. So mm -hmm. I hope that you know those of you who do did stick along and like uh, view this thought it was interesting or funny or not at least not the worst thing ever. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it wasn't torturous to sit here and watch us. <laughs> yeah, but that's every thought I think I could possibly have to share at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just very excited to see it start and there's an opening kind of twist that I'm excited to see. We'll touch on that in the next recap. Um, so yeah, I don't even know what it is. Oh, uh, just kidding. Don't do this to me. <laughs> I'm too gullible for this crap. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so I guess we are officially signing off then. So bye. Bye ladies. <laughs>